before you is the graph of the function x to the power of x. We're going to explain how we obtain this graph for negative values of x and make sense of the claim that 0 to the 0 should be defined as 1. Let's first attempt to graph the function y equals x to the x. When x equals to 1, we obtain 1 to the 1, which is just 1. Let's just plot that point over there. When we substitute x equals to 2, we get 2 squared, which is 2 multiplied by 2. This gives us 4. When we consider x equals to 3, we get 3 to the 3, which is 3 multiplied by itself 3 times. This gives us 27, but this is way too large for us to fit in our diagram. But what about 3 over 2 to the 3 over 2? This is equivalent to first cubing 3 over 2, followed by taking its square root. Calculating this approximately gives us 1.837. But this also works with 1 half to the half. This gives us 0 0.707. This also works with a quarter. In this case, we are not taking the square root, but we are taking the fourth root of a quarter. This also gives us 0 0.707. This also works for the 1 eighth power of an eighth. This time we take the eighth root instead. This gives us 0 0.771. Likewise with 3 over 8 to the 3 over 8. So far the calculation works relatively straightforward for fractions. But what about decimals? Well, the decimal 1.4 is really the decimal 7 over 5 as shorthand. This means that we can write this as the 7th power followed by the 5th root. This evaluates to 1.602. Well, what about larger decimals? Well, 1.41 really equals 141 over 100. So we can write this in terms of the 100th root. And this approximately equals 1.623. We can do this with 1.414 raised to itself. And as we let this sequence continue, we approach the expression the square root of 2 to the square root of 2. In a sense, this is the limit of its decimal expansion and this approximates 1.633. We can fill in the rest of the curve to obtain the familiar shape on the right side of the x-axis. Could we try to fill in the graph on the left-hand side? If we consider negative 1 to the negative 1, what we are really doing is taking 1 divided by negative of 1. This simplifies to negative of 1 over 1, which simplifies to negative 1. Let's plot the point on the graph. What about negative 2 raised to the negative 2? Well, that just equals 1 divided by the negative of 2 raised to the 2. This simplifies to 1 divided by 2 squared, which equals 1 over 4. Let's plug that into our graph as follows. What about negative of 3 to the negative of 3? Well, that just simply means we're taking 1 divided by negative of 3 raised to the third power. This whole expression would evaluate to 1 divided by negative of 3 to the 3, which simplifies to 1 divided by 27. Let's plot the point as well. Likewise, we can calculate what happens when we plug in negative of 4. Let's watch the calculation in action. So we are able to compute x to the x when x is a negative integer. But what happens if it's a negative fraction? This gives us 1 divided by negative of half to the half. This simplifies to 1 divided by the square root of a negative number, which is not a real number. In other words, we don't actually know if we could plot a point on the left side of the graph. 
And furthermore, what happens if we try to plug in the value 0? Pause the video if you'd like to try this out for yourself. And when you're ready, suppose t is a positive number. We want to calculate the negative of t raised to the negative of t. This equals 1 divided by the negative of t raised to the t. But the negative of t can be thought of as a negative of 1 times t. And we can split up this expression using the laws of indices by bringing the t into the powers of both negative of 1 and t. Pulling out the negative 1 expression, we get negative of 1 to the negative of t times 1 divided by t to the t. So let's summarize our result and check that what we did really actually makes sense. When t equals to 1, we do get a negative expression times 1 over 1, which gives us the exact same point that we plotted before. Plug it in t equals to 2 gives us positive of 1 over 2 squared. Plugging in t equals to 3, we get the negative of 1 divided by 3 cubed. Plugging in t equals to 4, we get the positive of 1 divided by 4 to the 4. But a further careful observation tells us that this expression lies in between negative of 1 and 1. In other words, we get enveloped on both the positive and the negative portion. How do we actually parse this for any non-integer value of t? Well, let's recall using complex numbers that we can write negative of 1 as e to the i times negative of pi. When we multiply the negative t in, we get the expression e to the i times pi times t. This can be written in polar form as cosine of the angle plus i times sine of the angle. But the original expression has a 1 over t to the t involved, and therefore we can multiply that on both sides. The left-hand side simplifies the negative of t to the negative of t, while we can do some algebra on the right-hand side to obtain a complex number. This means that to fill in the left side of the graph, we actually need to tilt it on its side and calculate the complex number solutions to this expression and each expression of t gives us the various possible complex number results. This gives us the full graph of y equals x to the x, even when x is a negative non-integer. This curve has a point in the center right over there. It's given by the coordinates 0, 1 which suggests to us that as we take x approaching 0 on either side, we're going to approach the number 1. Furthermore, if we were to plot the envelope, this curve does agree with the envelope that we discussed earlier. For details, check out the document in the description box below. This motivates the definition that 0 raised to the 0 ought to equal 1. But if that's debatable, what's not debatable is that 0 times 1 equals 0, which you can prove in the video here. 